His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And my God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. But now here's the problem. We have forgot what it is. True needs versus wants and desires. I don't think any fifth grader needs a cell phone. But could you find a fifth grader that didn't say, Give me a cell phone. <laughs> oh my friends have got a cell phone. I bet there's kindergartners that cell phone. And probably unlimited texting and, 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 and the internet too, you know. What do we really need? Well, I need a new computer. I said that. <laughs> That's how we do it with, with our wives. You know, honey, we really need that. <laughs> Okay, everybody get their Costco ad yesterday or whatever it was. So Susan's gone, or we got the Costco, new Costco ad. You know it's on Facebook. Two hundred dollars off new television. Well, I circled that because that's what you need. You go through the Costco ad, you circle the things that you need. So she opens the last night. Or this morning, it was perfect. Hey, you circle the TV like you need one of these. <laughs> we always do, guys. Guys, oh honey, we need that sixty-inch smart television. <laughs> No, we don't. You know, we don't really need a television. You're weird if you don't have one, but but but, but you don't really need one. We get so caught up in this, folks, and in our culture, need versus luxury, it is so blurred. Amen. Now listen, you gotta have a car. You really do in our culture. I get that. Do you need a laptop? You just need to tell me when you want to get on. I really need yeah. a truck. With you don't need a laptop. You just tell me when you want to. Thirty-five horsepower motor. Six speed tranny. Get about 17, 18 miles to get a better my suburban now, honey. We need that. See where they can save us money? It's only $55,000. She's just no fun <laughs> But see, unless we just... <laughs> hey, watch that hallelujah. Come on, you women, you always stick together. <laughs> but see, unless the followers of Jesus Christ start getting a handle on this, and we pass that handle along to our children. What are they going to be raised? One. More and more giving. More. <laughs> I know, I love that laugh. Folks, God's helped keep one of our children very humble because he's broke. And then and occasionally he makes a good financial decision. The other one, he doesn't have, he told me what he was going to buy yesterday. I went, really? Because dad, it really isn't a big deal. But it's not. He makes the money. It's, someone's dying in the other room. Anyway. No one's calling for 911. So I think they're having fun. I just heard scream. I don't want to hear the kids scream. Makes me want to go in and have fun. Sorry, you're stuck with me too. And so I'm stuck with me too. So, so the followers of Jesus Christ, we got to get this right. The culture's never going to get it right. Anybody knows the culture out there is a little messed up these days? It's not getting better. There are words that so oftentimes mean so little. They go in one of God's ears and out the other. Do you hear this? They go in one of God's ears and out the other. You think, well, God wouldn't do that. Sure he would. If you do it to your kids when they're blithering about something they really don't need, but, oh, if you don't have it, their world's going to fall apart. You think God's going to do that? See, our actions, our obedience, that's what gets his attention. That's what gets his blessing. We go back to that first Samuel, first, first service I turned right to the first Samuel. We go back to first Samuel, that 15th chapter again. What did Samuel say? Does the Lord delight in burnt uh, offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fact of rams. James does that would be awesome. something similar, but in James, that second chapter, here's what James says. This is this is Martin Luther's epistle of straw. He didn't like what, what James says here. This was what really made Martin Luther start spitting an animal from his teeth. James, the second chapter, we pick it up in verse 17. Excuse me, girls. Hey, can't talk. Verse 17, in the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied, excuse me, 
In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. See, when you act like that, when your obedience is there with your sacrifice, when your cheerful attitude is there with your gift, God goes, thumbs up, because your faith is matched by your actions and vice versa. See, getting 10% of tithe, your gross and more, this, this promise becomes clear. Go back to 2 Corinthians again, 9. 2 Corinthians that ninth chapter again. Listen to these beautiful promises that are, again, they are repeated over and over in the scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, this time verses 10 and 11. Now he, God, who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Verse 11. You will be made rich in every way. So that you can be generous on every occasion, and thus, excuse me, and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. God rewards obedience because he has to. That's part of the deal. God can't violate his rules. God can't violate the law of the harvest. When you give, even with a bad attitude, by the way, God has to bless you. But when you give with a good attitude, holy cow. When we follow the words of the Christian Bible, our needs get met. And when we give with these things in mind, all this shiny stuff that's a distraction, I get it. But all that shiny stuff will end up being debts on our credit cards. Because we'll realize we really don't Let's give some more. Let's adopt some kids from Compassion International. Let's make sure somebody, some of these kids ac across the world have food, have an education. I love what Jason shared with us last week. Poverty in the world is coming down. We are beating poverty in the world one child at a time through people like Compassion International who don't just give them food, they give them gospel. Be born again in Jesus. That is the number one thing. That, that assures your retirement plan. Then go beyond it. Seek to live and love like Jesus and be blessed in this life more than you can ever imagine with peace like the widow that gave her only two coins. And listen, folks, the empty tomb confirms all of this, all the promises of God. The empty tomb confirms everyone to be true. And God's been proving for generation after generation that the deal is sealed. The question is, will we be obedient? Will we be obedient to God that allows us to fall into these blessings? See, when we give our life to God, when we're born again, that's, that's just the start. And being born again means that that long-term investment is secure. S salvation is ours. Heaven is ours. But what dividend will we receive? We can start receiving dividends right now. Decide to grow in your spiritual obedience, folks, not just in your giving, but in every way. Give your heart first to God. Then give your stuff to Him. A tithe and more, I pray, will be your goal. And now that's how I'm going to start next week. If you're not tithing right now, it, it, you might have to have this plan. So, so you start saying, okay, I'm going to give a little bit more next week, or a little bit more in two weeks, and a little bit more every month, and a little bit more, so that maybe by the, the first quarter, the end of the first quarter next year, I am tithing a little bit more. You've got to get a plan started. It, it starts today. You can't say, well, as soon as I get more money, I'm going to tithe. Please find that in the scripture for me, and I will agree with that plan. When you begin to get on that track, here's what will happen. God will begin to bless you. Your car will break down. You, know, you can't keep putting stuff on your credit card. No, 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 no. You can't do that. Because if you do that, that means your credit card payment's going to go up. Is that going to leave money for tithe? No. So there's a whole new discipline you got to become a part of. But when you do, you get free from so much in this life. And you get blessings and peace and joy. Maybe you need some prayer to help have that to happen. Maybe you need some help. Remember, I wasn't in financial services. I might know how to do budgets and help you with stuff like that. Give me a holler. I'd love to sit down. Maybe you need some prayer in doing that. Maybe you just need prayer for, for anything. 
we're not the only ones that probably got bad news this week. It was a rough, it was a rough week for me. It really was. Maybe you need some prayer for some news that you got or the news of a friend. I'd love to pray about that as well. So why don't you come? We're all going to stand. We're going to sing this song. As we're standing and singing, why don't you come? I'd love to pray for you. Susan will be in the other room.